Welcome to Art in Canvas. We're going to discuss how to take an image on your computer and separate it into all of its different colors. Logos are really made to be printed. If you, if you create a logo or you have an idea and it sits in your brain or it sits in a file on your computer, it's not a mode of communication. But once you print it, it's communicating what you want to the world. And you communicate with, with words, right, with text. You communicate with color. When you're talking about a t-shirt, you communicate with um, how it feels on the body. We always have to remember when we're screen printing on t-shirts that t-shirts are made to be worn. So there's this, nether, this other level of, of, of the craft, right? Where we're not, we're, just, we're not putting it on a piece of paper and putting it on a wall and, and letting people experience it with their eyes, right? A t-shirt they're experiencing um, kind of with their whole body. You need your image in a, some kind of program software that that design. So you can find some free sources online. Um, a lot of um, screen printers in the screen printing industry, they use um, Illustrator or Photoshop. Um, and that's where you're first going to create your image. And once it's there, you can make a plan for what colors you want to use, uh, what kind of ink you want to use that will affect how it lays down on the shirt. Um, do you want to be able to feel the ink or do you want the ink to be a part of the garment itself. Uh, where are you going to put it on the shirt? Are you going to make it small? Are you going to make it a nice chest print? Um, are you going to, you know, are you going to have an inside tag or a sleeve? Um, and all of these, all of these questions, um, you should be asking yourself at the very beginning of the process so that you have a plan. Because the screen printing process involves a lot of various tasks, and each task is going to be impacted by your final goal. So it really comes back to the plan that you create. For, for the image right there at the beginning. Um, so in screen printing, we're gonna take an image and we're gonna basically break it down. We're gonna deconstruct it into all of its separate colors. Each one of those colors, we're going to translate into a screen or a stencil. That stencil or screen, we can then take out to our screen printing press and we can align each of those screens or stencils or colors of our design one to another, so that when we pull them down onto our palette, which is our t-shirt or our poster or our canvas, we pull each stencil down onto that, exactly lined up together one by one. At that point, we can reconstruct our design um, with ever colors or textures that we choose. And that's screen printing. We're in the art room and we have our design right here on the computer. And we it's three color design and we're gonna separate it into individual colors to print out onto our films to take into the dark room. Um, so now let's take a look at our design. We have a three color image here, so I'm going to scroll over there, that we're going to print today. It was a raster image that we have vectorized and placed into Illustrator. That's my design program of choice. And we're just going to separate it into its three colors and put it on our template so we have our registration marks around it and then we'll be good to go. And I've put each color already on its own layer over here. So as you can see on our middle artboard here, if I click away these two colors, I have just the pink here on the artboard, get lost. And then up here, I've also added at the top our color code. So this is Pantone number 2030 coded color, and that's the color code for this screen. This we could also say, here we could also just say pink, or blue or black or whatever this color is going to be. In this case, it's pink. We could also just put pink there if that's, if that's your color. So to print this film, we would just click on that, that channel, or, that, or sorry, not channel, that layer that this first color is on. We have, um, it's, this is for all made. Um, we have the date. We have front chest and maybe any other information about where we're going to put it on the shirt. We have our color code. And we're just going to, to go up to file, print, and send it to our printer. Um, when we're ready to do our next layer, we're gonna click that uh, layer off, and we're gonna toggle on our next color. Now you can see that this is 7600C, the, the green layer. So we'd also just say green if we wanted, or whatever color we're printing. Um, and we're gonna send that to the printer. 
And then once we're done with that, toggle that off. Toggles our last third and last color on, and it is 3248C, and it is our brown. Um, and you could also send that to the printer. Now, all three of those films are going to come out with your registration marks on there because the registration marks are on your template. And if you go up here, this is your color palette up here. Um, there is a box in our color palette with a tiny registration mark in it, and that's registration color. And you're going to want to make sure that your registration marks are, are selected as that color in your color palette um, so that Illustrator knows, oh, these are going in the same place on everything we print out, right? They're not going to change. Um, so they, they're kind of read as not a color, but a symbol that's on your template, a permanent part of your template. And that's how you color, se color separate a three color print. We use registration marks to align all of our screens or all of our colors back together on press. Um, and a registration mark um, will be above and below your image in precisely, exactly, exactly the same place on each screen that you create. And because they're exactly in the same place, your image is moving around in the center, right? You have your red, your blue, your yellow, or whatever colors you want, right? All converted to black, all sitting, each color on separate screens. And the registration marks are in exactly, exactly the same place on each screen. So when we take them out to press, we know we just need to align our registration marks um, precisely from one screen to the next, precisely on the same place on our palette um, or our canvas. And if we do that, our image falls, falls right together. Let's learn how to make a registration mark. Um, this is the type that we typically use in screen printing. Um, pretty simple to make here in, in Illustrator. We go to our line tool. Um, we're gonna make a vertical line, about a half an inch, like so. Um, and then we're gonna center that. Um, and now we're gonna make a horizontal line, also a half an inch, just to kind of cross it here. Doesn't be, have to be, you know, perfect. Um, we're gonna center that. So now we made a little cross. And now we're gonna go to um, our ellipse tool over here and hold, hold down the select so you get to ellipse. Um, and then if you hold shift, it'll make a perfect circle for you. So, do that. And then center that as well. Um, and now we have a registration mark. We're going to select the whole thing by drawing this box around it. And then we're going to group together. The keystroke for that is Command-G. And now you have your registration mark that you can kind of move around. As you can see on this template, we have them centered, both at the top and the bottom of the artboard. And then we also have four around the edges of this artboard here. So films are sometimes in out of the screen printing world are called transparencies. And they're basically um, an absolutely clear piece of paper or plastic. And you can put them in a, a printer and just print them out one by one. Each color is going to be in your design is going to be converted to black. And not just a little bit black, a very opaque black. And we're going to take each color and print it separately on its own film. So we're going to take that, that film with one color of your design converted to absolute black and we're going to use it to block light from hitting emulsion. So that's why it needs to be very, very opaque black because we're gonna, we're gonna not just like shine a little light on it, we're gonna like blast it with light and it needs to be dark enough and, and thick enough to, to block all of that light from hitting the emulsion on our screen. And we're gonna use the exposure of, of emulsion to, and the water solubil solubility of emulsion to create a stencil um, that we can we can push whatever color we want to um, through with ink um, when we make our image on press. Okay, so here we are at our film printer. The film just printed out. Here it is. Uh, as you can see, registration marks are right where they should be from our template. We have our first color, our color code, and all the info that we wrote on there. Um, 
This is an Epson inkjet printer. You want to make sure that you're using an inkjet printer, although it doesn't have to be um, this, this nice. This is a nice one. Uh, this one prints um, on a roll, but they do come um, with just sh printing sheets of film too. Um, typically they're like 13 by 19 um, is your smallest size there. You can even get, um, as you go along, you're going to be burning through black cartridges to get this nice op opacity. Um, so you can even get uh, ink systems where you can switch all your color cartridges over to black um, as you move along. So those options are available. If um, you're not ready to buy a printer yet, uh, you can get films printed for you um, at like paper printing shops, uh, just make sure uh, that you get a nice opaque black and you'll be good to go. So when it comes to the press and actually your design, printing your design or your image or your idea on the canvas, you want to make sure you're choosing something that's going to um, bring your design to like its fullest potential. Uh, in screen printing, it's better to have the smoothest surface possible. And coming from a shop, uh, a screen printing shop, of which there are a lot of screen printing shops around the country, and we are printing millions and millions of shirts, hundreds of millions of shirts. I mean, it's so many. Uh, so it's really important that the canvas that, we, that we're using is also not like subtracting from the world and the earth and the people who make it. So that's where All Made comes in. Um, not only is it a really smooth surface to print on um, using um, organic cotton, using recycled polyester, um, using modal instead of rayon. It's weaving them together in a way that makes a high quality surface for your, for your ink to land on, um, a, a smooth canvas. It's also doing it in a way that gives the people who make your shirt a living wage so that they can support their families because we're all humans at the end of the day w that you know have people that we love um, and so it's so all of those things um, are important to me when i'm choosing something to print on so better shirts make better prints they make your idea look sharper and crisper and better and people want to wear better shirts um, so that it's important to to choose something that's going to elevate your design so now that we've covered um, your image and how you get your image onto films and what kind of canvas you might want to put it on, let's go to the darkroom and talk about screens and emulsion.